Hello and welcome to Wisdom Included. I'm Shelley Carney. It's Friday with friends and I'm happy to introduce you to my friends and fellow entrepreneurs so they can share their stories with us. Today, I'm pleased to introduce founder and president of Casey's Cause, Breaking the Silence of Perinatal Depression, Susan Aguayo. A collaborative gathering place especially for women to share personal stories, support, and advice, wisdom included. Hi, Susan. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Shelley. Tell us your story. Uh, my story is I decided a little almost three years ago uh, to open up a nonprofit organization called Casey's Cause. And the reason why, because the organization is based on awareness from perinatal depression. Um, perinatal depression is actually postpartum depression that women suffer during pregnancy. Um, I had a daughter uh, who was recently married. Um, at that time and short time after she found out she was pregnant you know where it was wonderful and exciting news you know it came at a time where they weren't planning it because Mm -hmm. she had put college on hold Mm -hmm. while her husband finished college Um, but yeah it was exciting it was a a blessing for her she dreamed of being a a mom since she was a little girl Um, but unfortunately the perineal depression creeped up on her and how that came about is you know her getting the emotional of crying a lot, which we think it's it's normal, mm-hmm. you know, being very irritable, normal, not sleeping well, normal, but normal to an extent of the past seven days, six, seven days. Mm-hmm. And in her case, we weren't aware of, you know, her husband was aware of it, but he was just told all these things were normal. Right. Um, but the perinatal comes with depression. It comes with, with the hitting of anxiety um, and and uh, her sleeping pattern became insomnia. Mm-hmm. She was working full time. Uh, her husband wasn't working because he was a full player for UNM. So he had to finish school and it was hard for him to get a job at that time. So um, a lot started, you know, accumulating, you know, on her plate. Um, where if she wasn't pregnant, it was not something she couldn't handle. She was a tough cookie. You know, she went to school at Pittsburgh University, going to school for occupational therapist, full-time working, full-time school. She was able to handle that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But being pregnant was a different story. Mm. And um, she wound up, unfortunately, taking her life while she was pregnant. Um, She had reached out for help to the best of her knowledge that she didn't feel comfortable. She felt there was something wrong. Um, She reached out to the doctor's emergency the night before. Mm. And um, she was just told that what she was feeling was normal to go home. And she'd be comforted. And the next morning she was gone. So And she was out of state at the time. No, away she from lived you? here. No, she, she was living here. here. They moved back here. She she left school at Pittsburgh to come back here. Mm-hmm. Um their engagement was a little bit of a love story of it came out of the newspaper because he's going to UNM here and she's going to Pittsburgh over there. So he asked for a hand and coincidence Pittsburgh and UNM were playing. Mm. So it came out of the newspaper that um UNM lost but one of the players won, you know, a fiancé from Pittsburgh, so it was really cute. Uh, so she moved back home, um, and they lived here in Albuquerque at the time, and we live in Rio Rancho. So we really didn't have uh, much information what she was dealing with daily, mm. uh, just what she would, you know, reach out to us and say, hey, Mom, you know, how are you doing? I'm okay, you know. But she had a lot of vomiting. She had a lot of bloody noses, hmm. which... It's hard if I have not gone through it, but yet you're told the first trimester it's normal. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was dehydrated. She was very dehydrated, unfortunately, overlooked. Um, and so after she did pass away, uh, her husband gave me her phone, and that's how we were able to get the bits and bits together. We looked through Googling her, um, her Googling, her searching, mm-hmm. and she was searching, is it normal? to feel anxiety, you know, can you have depression while you're pregnant, you know, uh, I'm not sleeping well, I'm achy, you know, when would the vomiting stop, you know, Mm. I'm having these dark thoughts, you know, when, you know, and all those when, when, and why, and very limited information, so I thought, wow, I never heard of this, Mm -hmm. so I reached out to the doctors, uh, UNM, UNM has been a really big support, because they also have a perinatal depression department, Mm. and they, um, they're very uh, aware of what's going on, but not many people are being informed of. Yet, we have 20% of women that have been documented, and that's a large number, mm. documented. But to this day, we feel it's more because 
we've opened a nonprofit after months after she passed away, after we had enough information. Mm -hmm. um, we realized there's more because women are reaching out to us to share their stories, which we have testimonies on our website, or just to say, and now I know what I'm going through. Where do I go? What do I do? Mm -hmm. um, going through the nightmare our family went through and seeing what my son-in-law had to go through emotionally and our community who knew her, this happy cheerleader, good student, you know, friendly, and so forth. Um, we decided this nonprofit to help other people not go through this tragedy mm -hmm. um, and get educated. You know, uh, at first my mind was about educating women, but the reality is educating families. Right. Because if women don't reach out to the doctors, their partners will be the first ones to see the signs if right. they're educated. And unfortunately, the state does have high teen pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And so these teenagers, if they obviously are at home with their parents, then they're educated to be able to watch what their children are going through. Mm -hmm. um, so that's our goal, what we're doing with this organization, getting the resources, collecting it um, to help people. If somebody feels like uh, they're going through something like this, how, what do they do? How do they find you? How um, do they reach out? On the phone, they could just press the number. My number just gets pressed, and it goes directly to me. Um, they will let me know what they're going through. We do have signs on our website. You know, They could look out for themselves, mm -hmm. and then I'll give them the resource depending where they're at. And their pregnancy, you know, if it's just beginning, um, is it uh, they already going to a doctor, you know, well, tell them this is what you're going through. Our resources are really a lot for pregnant women. Also, what could ease and help them through their pregnancy, a lot of it also has, we do like essential oils, mm -hmm. has a lot for um, anxiety, depression, and for sleep. Mm -hmm. um, we also uh, recommend like perinatal yoga. Uh, you know, things I didn't know about before mm -hmm. um, that I really wish we would have known then. Mm -hmm. um, we would have definitely, you know, known what to tell my daughter than just like, it's okay. Because I remember the day before, right. you know, and other times she said, when will I feel normal? Right. And I said, honey, I said, is you pregnant? Mm -hmm. You know, this is supposed to be normal. I didn't go through it, but I hear it's normal. The first <laughs> trimester you're feeling, you know, nausea and all. Right. Because... You've had seven children. Yeah. I've had two. Every we pregnancy all, is unique, different. is different. Yeah. Every yeah. birth is different. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's hard to identify, you know, yeah. the extent of how how you should feel. Yeah, um, exactly. And, 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 you know, when we opened the nonprofit, I was blessed that we have uh, my daughter, and now my daughter, I don't know, who was just my son's girlfriend at that time, um, and um, her one, her coach from cheerleading, her best friend. We we opened it up with people that knew her, mm -hmm. or at least well, my daughter didn't get, didn't get to meet her before she passed away the week before she, she got to meet her. But uh, um, people that understood, I know. And and because perinatal depression is not immune to anyone, it doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter your your race, or even your financial status, mm -hmm. you know, um, it can happen to anyone, you know. They're looking out also what can happen to them or their their own loved ones, their children, and so forth. You know, um, so with this with this uh, organization, we took a leap of faith last year, and I went and produced and directed a uh, documentary. Okay, and we were able to get uh, a panel of three women mm -hmm. uh, of different backgrounds to be able to show uh, how this can happen to anyone mm -hmm. with UNM and Loveless involved. And a little bit of local acting, of reenacting back now that we realized the signs were there, mm. but we didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't recognize them, yeah. you weren't aware of it. Exactly. Sure. And so with that documentary, you know, we had an incredible um, screening at the Hispanic Culture Center mm. and um, in December. And right away, you know, we've, we've had... We, people reached out to us from from schools and from clinics, CYFD. They wanted the screening. Mm -hmm. so, you know, hospitals want to buy it as a um, educational tool for their staff. Right. And that was, you know, my big uh, goal in the beginning was to get people to see the seriousness of mm -hmm. this illness, you know, and not to feel that, well, that won't happen to me, you know. Um, oh, that can't happen to me. If it doesn't, that's great. But what about someone else you might know? You know, because I could say the same thing. It happened to me, but look, it happened to my daughter. Right. And I still have other daughters. I have granddaughters now. Mm -hmm. We just don't know. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I think that it's going in a good. It's going good. It's going in a really good path. And and and, and our, 
our goal is uh, take it to legislation to help women mm. be able to get screened during pregnancy because not all of us are the same, like you mentioned. Not all of us, pregnancy, deliveries, you know, even after they're grown, the teenagers are different. Um, and if women were screened during pregnancy each trimester, then they could be aware to avoid a situation for bad postpartum. Mm -hmm. One of the things the doctors did point out that really stood out to me, she said that if if some perinatal depressions are not treated, um, that's how you get these bad cases of postpartum. And mm -hmm. and I thought, wow, you know, this is why my goal was also contact CYD. Let's help these women, mm -hmm. these cases that we hear, that hopefully we could get less children hurt and less moms not knowing what's going on with them. So what is the treatment process if they should recognize something like this? Um, well, I could, it will depend always on the level of their uh, depression, mm -hmm. you know, definitely always the counseling. They, they always advise counseling, but counseling where you don't feel so, because of the word depression, people have a stigma, mm -hmm. but counseling say, hey, it's okay. You don't choose to be unhappy. You don't choose not to want baby. You need counseling. And then, of course, depending on your level of your perineal depression, there would be some um, proper uh, recommended medications to just get you through your pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about uh, your your uh, putting together the uh, the nonprofit and the and the steps that you had to go through in case there's anybody who's watching who's had some sort of tragedy in their own lives that they would like to raise awareness about and they're interested in doing something like you've done. First is really believing in yourself, believing in yourself and and taking the leap of faith. We went to uh, Santa Fe to state to be able to get our paperwork going. Uh, then we went to City Hall. I could to actually, you know, request I call out EIN, you know, which is an employee identification number. Um, and from there, we then filed, did our bylaws. <laughs> we got our bylaws. I call it organized, you know, uh, being able to see where each position's uh, responsibility is from mm -hmm. president, vice president, secretary to treasurer. And did you um, handle this just you and your family, or did you go me. out and get extra help? No. Just you? Uh, just okay. me. I Good. actually, um, I reached out to one person at the time who had an organization of her own, mm -hmm. and she said where to go. And I went, and then they told me, no, you're in the wrong place. You have to go somewhere else <laughs> first. And I was like, oh, gosh, can I do this? And uh, then we had another friend who has, you know, somebody knows somebody who knows about bylaws. And then I said, yeah, they told me about bylaws. What are bylaws? I'm Googling what are bylaws. So we put bylaws together. And... And then I, honestly, like I said, I put faith first and everything. I, I totally, as a mom, you can understand losing a child is something you never even think of. It, it doesn't it's supposed to work that way. Um, but I remember praying and I remember saying, "Give me the right people mm. that will mm -hmm. come mm -hmm. by my side to to put this together." Um, my husband. It took him longer, you know, um, to really. I, I won't say he'll ever come to terms. None of us ever fully come to terms with what happened but to really recover from the shock. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I went, I think, into uh, survival mode when everything happened. I had mm -hmm. to be there for him, for my son-in-law, for my children, my grandchildren. Um, and so I just started kind of like, became a soldier. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, really being able to really, uh, Google, Google became a friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you feel that having taken this on and created this nonprofit has helped you process through the grief? It has. It has because I've been able to just hear these women say thank you. Mm -hmm. It's almost like I hear my daughter's voice saying thank you, mom. You know, uh, you know, knowing that there is more children being born healthier mm -hmm. because attachment disorder could happen if a mom is not feeling if she does survive mm -hmm. and goes through this, you know, perinatal depression. She's not attached when that baby's born. You know, all she connects with is how miserable she was through her pregnancy. So it's hard. So for me to know there's more healthier children, for more moms to be able to raise their children or understand what they're going through, that's helped me heal. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how we, with the documentary, we called it Casey's Hope, My Life for Yours. You know, because um, we didn't know at first she was having a boy or a girl. Mm -hmm. um, she could say girl, I could say boy, and she would have found out, unfortunately, that week. And we did an autopsy and it was a girl. So... Um, then we didn't know the name and then again praying came into it again and different signs and I go oh that's right she liked the name Hope and so we said Casey's Hope that's how the documentary mm -hmm. came about my life for yours and that's how I see the purpose 
the faith that, you know, if so be that it was her life for, for many others, that's how I look at it. The healing helped yeah. me that way. So if people have further questions, they want to contact you, they want to find your website, they want to learn more, where can they go? Um, our website is www.caseyscause.com. We're actually launching .org. So either way, you can find us still this month, but we're going to be launching it off to .org. Okay. Um, it's Casey's Cause, both with K's. Mm -hmm. I tell people the word cause is with a K, not because I can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that her nickname was KK. Okay. And so we decided to link it as Casey's Cause that way. Okay. And um, that will be in the description below mm -hmm. so they can find it there. Yeah. Anywhere else? Um, we have Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Facebook, Casey's Cause on Facebook. also have Instagram okay. uh, that you can find Casey's Cause on. Um, and... Um, You'd be surprised. You'll find us in many booths. We did like 10, 11 booths last year. So we're, we're trying to be everywhere. Yeah. Um, and we have an event that we hold every year. Mm -hmm. It's a health uh, walk event. But this year we're going to pull it over a twist. So watch us and then you'll find out what our little twist is going to be this year All on right. our Facebook and our website. All right. Well, we'll look forward to, uh, to your event. And thank you so much for being here today thank to you, talk Shelley. with us. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. And for Wisdom Included, I'm Shelley Carney. Leave a comment below if you want to raise awareness or tell the story for a loved one. If this is your first time here, please take a moment to subscribe. I'll continue to post new videos on Wednesday and Friday each week featuring personal stories, support, and advice, wisdom included.